everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Cinematic Relief. My name is Thunder. And I'm White. I almost like introduced, I almost said Anthony, which like is my name, but like. Yeah, you could have said that. You know, I would have followed suit. Um, Today, we partook of <laughs> Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah. On, uh, on HBO Max? Max. Go? Max. Max. On HBO Max. Um, I've seen it twice now. Uh, Chris just watched it. Just watched it. S- seconds ago. S- moments before this podcast. Um, so I want to talk about, uh, expectation versus reality. Okay. What, what did you think was going to happen and how did you think you would like it? And then how, how did you end up liking it? So I'm going to tweak this a little bit if I may. Yeah, whatever. It turned out the way I expected it to, but it wasn't what I had envisioned, okay. what I wanted it to be. Um, so, I, I did like it. Mm. I liked it a lot. I was really hoping for, because I, I think this is what King Kong versus Godzilla, way back in the day, was, was I really just wanted a beat down, t- uh, fight to the death situation. I yeah, I'm not sure. I have a feeling that they both survived the last time too. Oh, okay. But I don't think Godzilla really killed at all back then. I think it was like fight him until they give up or okay. whatever. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, because this was Godzilla versus Kong was early in Godzilla's life cycle. It was like yeah. Godzilla, Godzilla raids again, and then Godzilla versus Kong. Gotcha. So and then it, and th- so I think Kong had the one movie, the yeah. the, the King Kong movie, and then yeah. that. Um, and it really was back then. It really was like America versus Japan. Mm-hmm. But I think that was uh, what I wanted. What we got was kind of what I expected. These two start a fight, and then a third uh, kaiju. Yeah. Inter- interrupts. And I thought that kaiju was going to be Mecha King Ghidorah. Because right. Mecha, Mecha King Ghidorah is like one of the heads is real and and or one of them's I forget if one of them's robot and one of them's real but it's like two in one and like the wings are mostly it, his wings in the last movie got fucked up in a way that I was like you could fix that and it would look exactly like like the metal parts that you would need to fix those would look right. exactly like Mecha King Ghidorah and then the after the credit scene in that movie which did have a payoff in this movie but not necessarily where I thought it was going uh. But I I thought it was cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, it would have been cool because the the hidden bad guy is Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, would have been cool if he was like a transformer and turned into Mecha Ghidorah. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. That'd be neat. Yeah, especially where they kind of utilized all they could out of uh, the Ghidorah head that they stole. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really um and this is not a bad thing this time. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Uh people will argue that Star Wars in Star Wars it was a bad thing, but you could definitely tell that these four movies suffer from not having the same directors and writing team yeah. for each one. They're dislocated, disassociated. Yeah. But in this instance I don't think it was uh that big a deal. I do want to say that uh in this in this I feel like in Godzilla, the first Godzilla movie, the one from 2014, there was about maybe seven minutes of monster fighting. Yeah. And then in King Kong, King Kong fought all the fucking time in his movie. He was fighting all left and right. And then Godzilla King of the Monsters had a good like 20, 22 minutes of monster fighting. This one had like a solid 40 minutes of monster fighting, which felt really cool. But did you notice that... You and I talked about this while we were watching it. This was basically a King Kong movie. He was big. Mm-hmm. he was the main character for all mm-hmm. intents and purposes. Did you notice that they're fighting and they're showing it all and it's this huge fight and they're beating the shit out of each other and then Kong is down, out comes Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla's holding his own against Mecha Godzilla and the camera is not focused on them. The camera's right. focused on bringing Kong back to life, which I thought was so funny cuz it's like that's what Godzilla. That's how they treat Godzilla. Like Godzilla's fights are always like in the corner, off oh, camera. That is funny. So as soon as Kong was out of it, they were like, "Ah, we don't got to show this." <laughs> and I'm sure that was the mentality, but it really like yeah, fit yeah, with yeah. everything else 
that that they've done with this franchise so far. That's pretty funny. I didn't notice that. Um, I will notice that. Uh, so they had. How do you want to put it? They had their introductory fight in the yes, water, yeah. which was very inconclusive. Yeah. Then and if it's a water fight, Godzilla's always going to win. Yeah. Then they had Kong takes out Godzilla. Then Godzilla takes out Kong, but Godzilla like c- practically killed King Kong. Yeah. Where so like they both had their moment in the sun, but one was oh, they both had their moment in the sun, but one was definitely eclipsed. <laughs> didn't, didn't mean to say that like that, but I like how it came out. So you are you hinting at the fact that it, it was it definitely taken to its natural like kill or be killed conclusion Godzilla would have definitely won. I think so. And yeah. I think that's what they were hinting at. Yeah. Um he basically killed King Kong yeah. and then they like had to resuscitate him. Yeah. Which if you're going to leave it ambiguous, I feel like that's a step too far. Mm. Don't make it that clear that one was going to win if you're not going to have one of them win. Right. Um I have a theory. Okay. That This franchise might be, quote-unquote, dead. Yeah. I think we're going to see Godzilla vs. Kong 2, though. I think if we get more films, I think this is what they've been leading it up to. You think if... if, if Oh, sorry. Saw something weird, but we're good. Uh, I thought we had a little uh, audio buzz, but we don't. Um, You're thinking that if given all the money in the world and as many movies as they want, you think this is like their Avengers... Where it's like, let's do a couple solo movies, and then we'll meet back up for... No, no, I see if it... Right, if they had all the money in the world, I think that's right. I think in this world, though, skip all the individual films from here on out. I think we, if we get any more, it's a Godzilla vs. Kong Oh, two. interesting. I think... Right, I think if they had Avengers money, we get... A maybe, Rodan movie yeah, and, no, and exactly. a Mothra movie. Exactly. Um, but I think in this universe... This franchise may be dead unless Godzilla vs. Kong 2 comes out. I think if there's a Godzilla vs. Kong, I think to make that interesting, there's got to be teams. I think it's got to be like Godzilla, Mothra, and a reformed Mecha Godzilla versus King Kong and two other things. You know I what I mean? I think it's King Kong and the humans. I think they've solidified that bond in this film. Yeah. I think it's Kaiju versus Kong ver- in humans. Mm hmm. That'd be cool. The old Godzilla movies have a lot of, uh, in this one, he fights Hidora, but he also fights this giant flying drill that the humans made. Yeah. So we're definitely, these movies are definitely missing that. They're not lacking because of it, but if, if they wanted to have, like like you said, like Kong and the humans versus a couple kaiju, or fuck it, Kong, Kong plus Pacific Rim versus Godzilla. Sure. Just they've been wanting to do that forever. Just do it <laughs> and have Kong and two Jaegers from from Pacific Rim versus Godzilla and M- Mothra and s- s- uh, something else. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? That would be interesting. That would be the new world way of doing it, right? Add a third franchise into the mix. Yeah, yeah, because these technically aren't even two different franchises. Right. I'm pretty sure the only reason they made Kong Skull Island as you know, seven out of ten as that movie is. Uh, I think the only reason they did that Set was to establish up. him for this yeah. movie. Yeah, isn't it interesting too that, like you were just saying with Kong versus Godzilla, the original. Um, that by the way, how pompous they were! Like his name also needs to come first. He has to win, and his name also has to be first billing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm just looking at the poster right now. And, uh, right, because that one's called King Kong vs. Godzilla. Oh, that this, was definitely intentional. This, that this one's is called Godzilla vs. Kong. Ironically, because it's, he's the main character. Right, yeah, that's what I was, yeah. Where was I just going? What was I saying? How did I start the conversation? Um, You were talking, uh, oh, fuck. Um, we, we were talking about how Kong is the main character. Before that, before that. Before that? Oh, Christ. You got distracted by the poster. I instantly got distracted <laughs> by the poster. I'm so sorry. Um, it'll come back to me, hopefully. Okay. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yes. I, d- I remember. Okay, good. Hey, don't you think it was interesting that 
they gave Godzilla two movies than yeah. this. They gave Kong the one movie, which it seems like he had back then, mm. than Godzilla versus King Kong. I think that's why whoever wrote and directed this film made Kong the the main character. Which makes sense to me. Yeah. It's like, like I said, I might have said it already uh, before we started recording, but it's like um, Civil War. With yeah, Avengers. Like it's uh, it's Captain America two or three, 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 because there was three Iron Man, right? Men, men films, men. Yes. <laughs> um. So it's it's giving me that vibe, which I don't yeah. mind. No, it's it's I I see th- I I understand what you mean. Sure, Civil War, you know, set up Spider Man and Black Panther, and sure it has most of the Avengers in it, but at the end of the day. The protagonist, well, no matter what team you're on, the protagonist is Captain America, mm. and the antagonist, whether he's in the wrong or not, is Tony Stark. Right. Right. God, talk about the sorry. Talk about the best, like hand to hand combat fight scene in movie history. <laughs> it's so good, so well choreographed. But we're not talking. No, about I know. I'm sorry. We're talking Marvel. about. We're talking about Godzilla versus Kong, who, who, which otherwise known as watch three people who aren't American fail to keep their American accents for the whole film. Yeah, no kidding. All um, uh, seriously, all through Millie Bobby Brown, Rebecca Hall, and Alexander Skarsgård, you could all tell like they're doing American accents, but they don't sound good. But they gave the kid from Deadpool. Yes, his own yeah, accent. <laughs> I don't. That's what I'm trying to say. Like M- Millie Bobby Brown's character was already fucked because she was American in the last movie, but like. Why did they need Rebecca Hall and Alexander Skarsgård's character to be American? Why couldn't they be British and right. Swedish? Right. Why, I, 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 that's the same argument I had with Doctor Strange. Yeah, that one. Is the, I was thinking about that the other day. We're not talking about <laughs> Marvel. I know. We. I, I love Marvel so much. I, but let me say one last thing. Sure. You and I had talked about it during the film. The, the, the axe was a bit derivative. Yeah, that the axe was interesting because I mean it was a cool concept, right? He's yeah. got an axe and it's probably made out of Godzilla uh scale. Yeah. yeah. Um but it was it was weird that they included it cuz that's never been a part of this god this King Kong is weirdly into like weaponry. Like yeah. he's got the trees and he's, yeah. he's you know he's throwing monsters into other monsters and he's I guess they wanted to give him something cuz Godzilla has his friggin breath yeah 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 i mean if you're talking about making it a fair fight sure then there you go um but no it was was very interesting that bringing it back to the avengers you know this being the avengers of this franchise comparison is it was very interesting that after uh the popularity of infinity war and when referring to the axe to a lesser extent endgame uh that they would be like What's King Kong's big thing for this movie? We're gonna give him an all-powerful axe that yeah. he that he was destined it was, to that have. That was a bit too much culture for this ape for me because mm. they literally went to a temple, and, and I'm just sitting there the whole time, and I was like, "Who made this? <laughs> did the yeah. ape, do the apes have enough intelligence? Right, there's that a they giant, can... there's a giant King Kong yes. statue. Who carved exactly. it? Someone and, had to carve it. And if it. you're telling me it's the natives of Skull Island. Or, or the natives whoever, of Hollow Earth. Or of, of Hollow... Well, actually, the excellent point, both of us. <laughs> There's no humans there. Right. Who the hell carved that thing? Yeah. Are you telling me that they have enough intelligence that they know, they understand intricate carvings? Mm, like yeah. that? Sculptures? Like King Kong... They King, made an axe! King Kong is pretty intelligent in this film. He's definitely more intelligent than Godzilla is. He, but here's the thing. He's as intelligent... What as a we, real normal as gorilla. As a normal yeah. ape. Which cannot construct an axe, and if it could, let's get um, <laughs> uh, bulletproof glass. Planet in... of the Apes up in this. Bitch. Oh yeah, also that yeah. Like that's a evolutionary. <laughs> he made an axe. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> we're screwed. Imagine being the zoo person where you're like, all right, checking the flamingos. Good, we're good. Penguin, the gorilla. The, the gorilla has an axe. <laughs> Did we get? I think he made it. <laughs> mayday! Mayday! Don't open the park. <laughs> Benji made an axe. I don't know how he even did it. We have to study this. We're fucked. If that's the <laughs> case, they're so much bigger that's than us. That's literally how Planet of the Apes started, yeah. minus the sentientness of the apes. But, but that's. But then you're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> they can make an axe. We're fucked. Have you ever seen Tim Burton's shitty ass Planet of the Apes movie? 
the new ones? No, no, no. The new ones are fine, I'm sure. There there was one in between. Oh. The, there um, was a really shitty one made by Tim Burton in between the new uh, Andy Serkis ones and the old classic Charles Andy Hesse ones. Andy Serkis made the new Planet No, of the he Apes? played the monkey. Oh, okay. Um, No, I, I don't think I've seen all the way through a single Planet of the Apes. The only one I've seen is that shitty Tim Burton one, and fuck, is it bad. <laughs> um, they just seem boring. The like new ones, it. the the old ones seem really boring, but the the old ones, you know, the new ones and the new Planet of the Ape movies are action films. Yeah. The old Planet of the Ape movies are hard sci-fi yep. films. Yep, I was so just going to say it's that. It's kind of like Doctor Who. It's kind of like how Doctor Who is like an action movie now, and it used to be like like very like contained, like lots of conversations about s- scientific theory and stuff like that. And they're both interesting for their own reasons, yeah. but uh, I, I don't think I would... Uh, Enjoy the uh, classic Planet of the Eight movies either. The best Planet of the Eight movie is a Powerpuff Girl movie, by the way. <laughs> um, the end. Um, you know what kills me about Planet of the Apes? They become as intelligent as us. Mm. They already have a society they can take over. But in the original Planet of the Ape movies, everything's fucked. Mm. Why haven't they started making civilization? Wait, what do you mean? I feel like... it's post-apocalyptic? Like, yes. From the f- small bits I've seen of the old Planet of the Ape movies, yeah. everything looks like a jungle. Oh, okay. But, like, no buildings, no, you know, no, um, what am I trying to say? Like, roads and stuff like that? Uh, it just, yeah, but, like, wrecks of buildings. Mm. What's the word for that? R- ruins? Ruins. There's no ruins. There's, it just seems like a jungle. Yeah. And it's like, if you're this smart, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me for being this ignorant about Planet of the Apes. I could be totally off mark, yeah, I but don't from what I've seen, it's what it seems like is going on there. I could have bet money that it was about a s- astronaut who goes to an ape planet and accidentally brings back apes to our planet. No. He, remember, he thinks that. Then he finds the Statue of Liberty, and he's like, God damn you, you blew it all to hell. Oh, <laughs> I have. I I think what we're learning is that we should watch one of these shits and report back about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd I'd watch the first one all the way through. My understanding though is he thinks he's on a different planet, but he's on Earth in the future. Oh, you're right. Yes, he doesn't travel through space. He accidentally travels through time, and then at the end of the movie, the twist is it was Earth the whole time. Something to the yeah, to the, yeah, yeah, something like that. Fuck, we sound so stupid. Um, well, it's a movie we've never seen. We're piecing, <laughs> no, I know. Together, I know. We're piecing together a B-level historic movie. I mean, right, this, isn't yeah. like, this isn't Star Wars. Like, <laughs> you know nothing about Star Wars. This is Planet of the Apes. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> it I know that. I know silly. that. I know that in the new ones, Tom Felton is in it, and he's pretty pretty cool. He played Draco Malfoy. <laughs> the puppetry, all not puppetry. Um, CGI. Not CGI. I'm talking about the old ones. Again. Oh. The mouths, like, don't move. It's oh, okay. From what I remember, I don't know. Maybe um, we'll watch a movie, and then we'll tell you what we think about it. Also, King Kong talks in this film with sign language. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And that it's was better only th- be coo- cool because it's a real thing. Right. Which, I'm not going to lie, this whole movie, I was sitting there like, how in-depth can you... C- like, they understand sign language, but is it like... I'm talking real apes now. Oh, but yeah. But is it like, oh, I'm hungry. I need I need food. I feel hungry. Or is it like, how was your day? And they're like, oh, it was fucked. <laughs> yeah, that can they? Yeah, can gorillas hold full conversations? Yeah. Probably not. But can they learn sign language? Absolutely. It's cooler than when Godzilla talked. In one of the in one of the old movies, Godzilla talks to the humans, and he's just like, <laughs> and they subtitle him. It's <laughs> stupid. Who's that for? Why is he talking? They can't understand him. <laughs> no, they do. What? <laughs> Can they see the subtitles? Uh that would the the fiction would uh would prove so. Um wanna <laughs> wanna check in with our pal, see what he thinks of Godzilla or King Kong? Yeah, let's uh let's He must have been in his fifties when King Kong versus Godzilla came out. <laughs> uh yeah, let's let's keep talking while I while I uh while I do this. What else is there to say? King Kong lives a very cultural life. Oh, I wanted to talk about Mechagodzilla real quick because there was two, there was two toys. I should be doing this while I do it. There was two toys, right? Yeah. That uh. Oh, leaked. they already. Oh, that's dumb. What? Just 
toys leaking. Oh no, yeah, there's but the thing is um the thing is I think I was going to say I thought you were going to say they'd already released before the movie came out. I was no, going to say that's they just dumb. they just leaked. Um they they so one of them was totally fake. One okay. of them I remember looking at I was like that doesn't look great and it's just totally not the design they went with. Okay. One of them was real, but it was a pop figure, so the head was fucking big. So oh. it kind of looked stupid. And I was like, ah, it is a pop figure, though. I re- I didn't anticipate, I-, I thought based on those two things that I wouldn't like what Mechagodzilla looked like. I thought he looked fucking cool. Yeah, he I thought good. he looked real nice in this yeah. movie. Yeah. <coughs> so I'm seeing a lot of, uh, like, we could talk about the 1998 Godzilla movie, but, like, that one's. No, let's do the King Kong versus Godzilla if he has something on it. Um, I don't know if he was, but he always loves going back. Movie? Oh no! You, you know, know what, what I mean? You're right? Yeah. He did Snow White, and he was. Oh, if we're being real, he was probably like just born when Snow White came out. The problem is, I'm having trouble googling this because I'm googling Ebert King Kong versus Godzilla, and I'm finding reviews from his website of the movie we just watched, not well, written by him. Can you look on your poster to see the director? Good idea. Yeah, I'm good for one of those every now and then. No, no. Oh, there's got to be. No, there's actually no names on that. Not even Japanese ones. Damn. Um. This is an article, and the article is Robert Roger Ebert bashes the original Godzilla. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can find like. Uh, Ebert Godzilla 1954. Nope, that's a review of. 2004. Let's just read this article. Let's see what this article is about. Okay. Um. Oh, this is not a good website. This website. Nope, this website is not going to do it for us. <laughs> Roger Ebert. Could you re- find it on his site? Roger, I couldn't. No, Roger Ebert's review of Godzilla 1954. Where? But there's no link to it. <laughs> Did I click this? Oh, it's been deleted. Ooh. It doesn't exist on the internet. Damn, it was okay. So that racist, huh? So we could look at what he thought of Oh my god, probably. You make up a you make a good point. We could look at what he thought of Godzilla Final War, but neither one of us have seen that. Have you seen the the Matthew Broderick Godzilla, yes. the American made one? Okay, let's let's do that then. Um friendly reminder that that movie sucks dick. I think he compares it to uh, a Ghibli film. Yeah, <laughs> I really probably. want him to. I mean, per, 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 probably. All right, let's see what he said. So first of all, we're it's just called Godzilla. No title on this one. So he did in fact review it when it came out. Um, and this is a review of the Matthew Broderick Steven Spielberg is mentioned. Just kidding. He didn't make this film. Why? The fucking bad, the one where he looks like an iguana and it's terrible and everyone hated it. This is what it, he's reviewing. What do you think he gave it? Just as a reminder to my co-host Chris and the audience that Roger Ebert does movie reviews out of four stars because he's a full-fledged psychopath. Sometimes he likes CGI. Sometimes he hates it. Sometimes he likes action. Sometimes he thinks it takes away from the movie. The CGI, it is Godzilla, though. The CGI in this movie looked good when it hap- when it came yeah. out. I'm going to say a three. One and a half. Oh! Ho, ho. He finally got one right. Uh, t- God damn, this guy. This is how his review starts. Cannes, France. <laughs> Going to see Godzilla at the Palace of the Cannes Film Festival is like attending a satanic ritual in St. Peter's Bel- Belicia. Okay. Okay. But Basilica, B A S I L I. I think where Basilica. the Pope lives. Basilica, Basilica, Saint Peter's Basilica, where the Pope lives. <laughs> it's a rebuke. It's a rebuke to the faith that the building represents. Cannes touchingly adheres to a, fi- a the, to a belief that film can be intelligent, moving, and grand. Godzilla is a big, ugly, ungangly device to give teenagers the impression that they are seeing a movie. Oh, okay. I was gonna. Oh, this. This condescending prick. I was going to agree with him. But he's talking about the concept of Godzilla. 
He's I know. not talking about this film. He's talking about Godzilla as a whole. I know. I was gonna be like, yeah, it was a bad movie. Probably shouldn't have been at Cannes. Oh, you just, you just, yeah, are being an asshole. I see. It was the festival's closing film, coming to an end like the horses in a parade, perhaps for the same reason. I think he's making a shit joke about how horses shit. Uh, it rains all through. It rains all through the God, the Godzilla, and it's usually night. Are we still talking about the, his fucking viewing experience? Uh, well, of course it is. That makes the specific effects easier to obscure if you never get a clear look. Oh, no, he's talking about the movie. He is talking about the movie. Sorry. He's talking about how special effects look better in the dark. That is true. That uh, Jurassic Park 2 still looks incredible because it's yeah. at nighttime in the rain. It's the same shit. Right. The, if you haven't seen Jurassic Park 2, the last 30 minutes are a Godzilla movie. <laughs> uh well, of course it is. That makes the special effects easier to obscure. And he's t- coming at it uh, from a negative point of view, but he is technically right. If you never get a clear look at the monster, you can see how shady it is. Steven Spielberg opened Jurassic Park by giving us a good long look at the dinosaurs in full sunlight, and our imaginations leapt up. Godzilla hops out of sight like a camera shy kangaroo. Sure. The makers of the film, director Roland Emmerich and writer Dean Devlin, Follow the timeless outline of many other movies about Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, Gamera, and their radioactive kin. There are ominous attacks on ships at sea, alarming blips on radar screens, and a scientist who speculates that nuclear tests may have spawned a mutant creature. A cast of stereotyped stock characters are introduced and made to say lines like, I don't understand, how could something so big just disappear? Or, many people have had their lives changed forever. And then there are big special effects sequences as Godzilla terrifies New York. One must carefully repress intelligent thought while watching such a film. The movie makes no sense at all as a careless pastiche of its better, and yes, the Japanese Godzilla movies in in their way better, if only because they embrace direct instead of condescending to it. You have to, abs- oh, uh, you have to absorb such a film, not consider it, but my brain rebelled and insisted on implying logic where it was not welcome. How, for example, does a 300-foot-tall creature, not how big he is in the film, but how, for example, does a 300-foot-tall creature inside a, fit inside a subway tunnel? How come it's sometimes as tall as the tunnel and other times taller than high-rise office buildings? How big is it anyways? Why can it breathe fire? Not what it breathes, but hardly ever uh, makes use of the ability. Why, when the heroes hide inside the Park Avenue tunnel, is the tunnel too small for Godzilla to enter, even though it's larger than the su- even though it is larger than the subway tunnel? And why doesn't Godzilla just snort some flames down there and broil them? Most monster movies have at least one bleeding heart environmentalist to argue the case of the monstrous beast, but here we only get Matthew Broderick's character, uh, an expert on the mutant earthworms of Chernobyl, who He's seems saying- less like a scientist, uh, like a placeholder waiting for a rewrite, insert more interesting character here. He's saying, why aren't there some liberal pussies up in there saying don't kill Godzilla? His, uh, I'm paraphrasing his own words. <laughs> that is the way he is giving that off. He's like, there's usually some pussy out there who's like, well, don't kill him, but fuck that guy in this movie, I guess. That's what he said. Um. So he goes on to describe the plot, talk about the... Uh. Oh, interesting. The New York's mayor in this film is called Mayor Ebert. Oh, uh, that's cute. I'm sure he loved that. He actually seems to... Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, it's intentional. I see. Oh, and then there are there are New York's Mayor Ebert, played by whoever, and his advisor, Gene. The mayor, of course, makes every possible wrong decision... He is against evacuating Manhattan, etc. And the advisor eventually gives thumbs down to his re-election campaign. These characters are reaction to Emmerich and Devlin, to by Emmerich and Devlin, to negative Siskel and Ebert reviews of their earlier movies, Stargate and Independence Day. But they let us off lightly. I fully expected, fully expected to be squished like a bug by Godzilla. Now that I've inspired a character in a Godzilla movie, all I really still desire for... All I... All I really desire is for several Ingmar Bergman first characters to sit in a circle and read my reviews to one another in a hushed tone. Oh, I thought that was the end of it, but it's not. What oh, a loser. Hold on. Um, yeah, so, so the directors hated Siskel and Ebert's review of their other movies so much that they put 
Siskel and Ebert which, in their movie, essentially. Which good for them. Uh, but he, of course, because he's a... a What's it called when all you care about is yourself? Self-centered? No, like a, like the disease. Ego. He's a, oh, oh. He's a, a sociopath or something. He, he's so self-absorbed that he's like they shit on me, but but really, my character was, didn't die. So yeah, he was like, but really, they're sucking my dick at how awesome <laughs> I am. Yeah, um, he's just such a loser. You suck. That's why they your own the only time you inspired a movie character was so that they can be like, see how shitty he is. <laughs> um I'm glad we're not the only ones. Well, yeah, dude 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 gives out like one positive review for every thirty five negative reviews, he's gonna bound to get some haters. Mm. Like the maker of a uh, brown run rabbit or whatever that porn movie was called. <laughs> uh there is a way to make material like Godzilla work. It can be campy fun like the recent Gamera Guardian of the Universe or hallucinatory like Inframan or awesome like Jurassic Park or it can tap into certain elemental dread like the original King Kong from 1933. <laughs> Fuck. But all of those approaches demand a certain sympathy with the material, a zest that rises to the occasion. And Howard hangs the thing and then he compares it to the thing for a long time, a movie that doesn't have anything to do with uh, cinematic monster movies. Here's how the review ends. There's nothing wrong with making a Godzilla movie and nothing wrong with special effects. There's nothing wrong with special effects, Ebert. Your past reviews and future reviews <laughs> beg to differ. <laughs> uh, but don't the filmmakers have some obligation to provide pop entertainment that at least lifts the spirits? There's a real feeling in King Kong fighting off planes that attack him or the pathos of... Th- fuck. The pathos of the monster in Bride of Frankenstein who was so misunderstood. There is a true sense of wonder in Jurassic Park. Full stop. <laughs> wow, he is all over oh, Jurassic Park. Oh, dude, he Park. loves Spielberg. He fucking loves... Spielberg could do no wrong, <laughs> as far as this guy gets concerned. There's a true sense of wonder in Jurassic Park. Full stop. Godzilla, by contrast, offers nothing but soulless technique. A big lizard is created by special effects, wreaks havoc, and is destroyed. What a, what a cold-hearted mech mechanistic vision so star no mecha godzilla wasn't in that one Me- mechanistic what a cold-hearted mechanistic vision so star for emotion or wit the primary audience for godzilla is children and teenagers and the filmmakers have given them a sterile exercise when they hunger for dreams good christ i hate reading the words he says sometimes he's not a good writer no. whether or not he so here's the thing yeah, I'm, are you are you or not that he's a good film film critic he right doesn't do a good essay i actually want to break that down he's not a good writer i mean we've proven that a few times mm-hmm. this dude it's sometimes hard to grab hold of what he's trying to convey to you and it's not because he uses big words right it's because sometimes he just rambles on like a madman mm-hmm. about stuff that has nothing to do about the film that you're c- currently watching um and as far as uh special effects go you literally have a review about the transformers where you're like <laughs> I was going to bring that it too. blinded me and then i had a seizure <laughs> because of the special effects but he's also a very bad film critic. He does mm. not do a good job. He goes out of his way to bully movies that Rarely have nothing to do with what he should be focused on. We've probably read about, I'm going to lowball it, say 30, 35 Ebert reviews at yeah. this point. We've agreed with something he said maybe once or twice. Because usually what I'd happens even is. say three or four times. Usually what happens is he'll start to say something and I'm like, oh, I see where he's going. And then he doesn't go there. He goes that happened on this with me. Completely different. And I'm like, oh, just kidding. I, once again, don't agree with you. Have you ever seen. I already asked you. Um, it's not good. It's not terrible. It's not the worst Godzilla movie, for sure. Um, have you ever seen the cartoon that it spawned? Uh, what? The 1998 Godzilla movie with Matthew Broderick. I don't think so. So, there is, if I may talk about this for a second, there's a part in the 1998's Godzilla movie where there's baby Godzillas, and they kill them all, right? Yeah. But there's one that doesn't die. There's right, like, I remember that. There's, like, one you can, like, see it on camera. It's like, that one lives. In the Godzilla, not, in the Godzilla animated series based off that film, that one grew up. Okay. Is now it's a dude. The Godzilla in the film is a, a lady. 
Yeah, but this right, one's right. a dude, um, and he's the last of his kind. He is Godzilla, and from there it's just a monster fighting movie. He doesn't fight any legacy characters. He fights he fights a lot of original characters. Okay, but there's a part of that show where he fights. I forget what they call it. They don't call him Mecha Godzilla, Cyborg Godzilla. That's oh. what they call him. He fights Cyborg Godzilla, and what Cyborg Godzilla is is it's the Godzilla from the movie. It's his mom with robot parts. Jesus. Uh, and that's I fucked up. think that's really cool, and I always bring it up whenever I uh, whenever I can, whenever the 1998 Godzilla movie comes up in conversation. That is cool. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong was good. If you like the other three, you'll definitely like this one. If yeah. you haven't seen the other three, no reason to to watch this one. Right. Um. There, there's, you know, you might be confused a little bit about the human characters and the Ghidorah skull, but other oh, than yeah. that, other than that, there's, there's really nothing. Did you know they don't say this that well in the movie at all? I don't even think they did. But did you know that the mom character from King of the Monsters is dead? She died in between that movie and this movie. The, the, the Eleven's mom. She turned out evil. I thought she died in the movie. Oh, did she? Yeah, I think she died in the film. Does she? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. She does. That's my bad. I forgot about that. Okay, that's why they didn't do a good job of explaining because you're sh- supposed to already know. Yeah. And I guess I did. I just forgot. I didn't care about that character. I think that's why I forgot. Right. Um, Because that character was kind of kind of annoying, kind of uh, uh, not great. No. Um, But no, it was fun. I, I, I liked it a lot. I feel like the first time I watched it, I was going through something. I had like a lot of my mind and I didn't really like, I was like, oh, it was fine. Mm. But uh, thinking about it afterwards, watching it a second time with you, I fucking really like it. And I, I like that they finally made one that just feels like, it feels like we got the movie we deserved. It feels like there was a, and what was missing was a fuck ton of monster fighting. Yeah. And that's what that this movie was. It was probably like like an entire third of the movie was dedicated to no dialogue. Yeah. M- kaiju are fighting each other. I don't know why we have to uh, this is a complaint I have with all of them obviously, but I don't know why we have to americanize it. I don't know why we can't just call them kaiju. Yeah, I, d- I was thinking about that too. I don't Cuz if we're going to do that. that shit where all the Asian characters refer to him as Gojira, mm-hmm. why can't we just call at least that character should call him Kaiju, Kaiju right? right? I don't I know. I think they have. I think they might have. Does Sarazawa, old Sarazawa say Kaiju, doesn't he? I think so. I feel like he maybe he does. Which would make sense. Yeah. I, I don't mind the name Titan, but... Mm, I feel like it has implements of other creatures, though. Yeah. Titans are a thing. Right. P- true. Also in like Greek mythology, Titans yeah. are a thing. Also, I feel like, and this is probably a product of director flip-flopping once again. Um, but I feel like they kind of rushed Kong versus Godzilla in the sense that, like, in the last movie, they were like, there's 17 kaiju. Yeah. We're not going to talk about m- many of them. We're going to show only a, b- a few of them. And most of them are going to get, like, a 30 seconds of screen time, literally. Um, and then in this one, they're like, it's a year later... Godzilla killed all the other ones except King Kong. Now it's just them two. Oh, is that the implication? That's that they're what I all thought. Dead? Either they're all they all bowed down to him though. Right? Maybe I I the, I thought that I thought that it was they're all dead because he just killed them all. Maybe they all fucked off and they know not to fuck with Godzilla and they're hiding somewhere. I think that's the case. Um, I thought we'd see at least one of them. Yeah, I really uh, wanted to see film. that woolly mammoth one. The woolly mammoth one is cool. Yeah, the spider one is cool. Yeah, there's a lot of cool designs in that, uh, and and a lot of secondary designs that kind of got left on the cutting room floor. Like m- some of the seventeen technically are mentioned in the movie and in the credits, but aren't shown. But they right. were they were character designs, so you can find them online some places. There's a couple a uh, couple Godzilla fanatic YouTube channels that uh, I've seen a couple videos of that talk about those, um, and they seem really cool. It it seems like like we were saying. If they had all the money in the world and they got to make as many movies as they want, I think some of them fools would have had their own oh, movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I would have watched them. Sure. I would have watched them for sure. But I'm satisfied with this. If this is the end of it, I'm satisfied. And I'm also excited to see what happens next because there's no way that this is 
the last American made Godzilla film. No, you know? I mean even if it changes hands again. Right. Uh this has been going on for almost a hundred years mm. at this point. I they're not gonna stop now. Right. I what I wanna see, what I've always wanted to see, and what I think would be really cool is a Japanese Godzilla versus an American Godzilla. That would be really cool. If we could get... But the issue is you can't split the franchise like that. Japan can't be making their own Godzilla movie while America's making a Godzilla movie. Somebody right. owns the rights to Godzilla. No, right that's not true. They've been... they. Uh, there was a Japanese-made Godzilla movie in, in 2016. Oh, really? Because they were done making Godzilla films, and then they saw the popularity of the 2014 one with Bryan Cranston... And then they got excited again, and they were like, we're going to make one, and that's where Shin Godzilla oh. comes from. That one up there. No kidding. Um, uh, what I was going to say is I would love to see Legendary Godzilla versus Shin Godzilla. Yeah. I would love that, because Shin Godzilla looks like a demon. He, he, he's he got a, a bunch of... He, like, leaks blood. He's really creepy oh, and weird. I want to see him. And I, I think that... Yeah, I, I've yet to see Shin Godzilla. We should find it, because I've, I've wanted to see it for a while, because um, it sounds really... It's, it seems to be really good. Um but i think if if this is the end of the legendary titan monster verse i think the next thing that i would want is something like that sure that'd be cool rather than another king kong movie or another godzilla movie but i would also take our version of God- godzilla versus kong 2 where it's like team up kong and the humans yeah. versus versus godzilla and a few of his buddies uh, but yeah, no, it was it was good. I th- thank you uh, to HBO for keeping this podcast no afloat. <laughs> what's next? What's next? I feel like April on their list or ours on their list because we just did Tom and Jerry. We didn't do it, but they did. And then this month was Godzilla versus Kong. I think next month might be In the Heights, which I'm definitely gonna watch. But I'm not. I if you don't want to watch it, that's totally in fine. Heights. In the Heights is the play that Lin Manuel Miranda made before he made Hamilton. Oh, interesting. And they're making a movie out of it. And we got Space Jam in July. And I know that um, um Well, I know our two July episodes. And uh Mortal Kombat is also one of them. The Mortal Kombat movie. Um, which I will definitely be checking in on. And then we got Suicide Squad in uh September. Which, you know, at that tentative point, people might be at the theater. Yes, yeah, no, that's that's that that's ex- that's exciting to me also. Um but yeah, that'll do it for us. Thank you so much for listening. Uh go watch this film if you have HBO Max cuz it was very good. Um and until next time. I've been Thunder. I'm Lightning. Stay safe, stay clean, and we'll see you next time. All right. Let's keep this brief. For the month of April, we'll be conducting our biggest contest and giveaway yet. The goal? Help us reach 200 subscribers on YouTube and 35 followers on Twitch. Here's what you can get if these goals are met. Please make sure to follow, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.